When it comes to the world of bizarre and disturbing cinema, Japan seems to be incredibly well versed in taking your mind to a weird, dark and confusing place, which leaves you questioning what it is that you've just watched. Audition is the first Japanese disturbing movie I've covered on this channel. We've done American, French, Italian and Dutch, so it's time to dip my toes into the world of Japanese horror. Audition begins with a woman passing away in a hospital bed, with her husband on his knees next to her as she goes. Her son walks into the room, on his way to bring her a get well soon gift, but she dies right before he enters, so he's left standing there, looking at his dead mother and his grieving father. We see that it's now seven years later, and the son and father are fishing together by the sea. For the life of me, I've not been able to pronounce these characters' names right, so for the sake of saving myself from the embarrassment and probably coming across insensitive, I'll just refer to them as the father and the son from here on out. The father and the son seem to get along well. They have a good relationship between them. They're able to talk about serious things, yet still joke around and have fun. The son suggests that perhaps it's time for the father to seek out a wife and remarry. He states that he's just been moping around lately, living one day to the next, just simply existing, and finding a wife would really benefit him. Despite the hardships this family have faced, the son and father have still managed to retain a healthy relationship through it all, with the father even managing to grow his own successful business while supporting his son with his romantic endeavours. The father has a friend who works in the film industry as someone who auditions people for potential roles. With the friend being told by the father that he's looking for love once again, he comes up with the idea of having him sit in on the auditions, which would help him prospect for a potential future wife. I'm not sure how ethical it is to have people literally audition under the pretense of appearing in a movie, but with you really just looking for wife material. But it definitely cuts out all the crap in between. After being handed a big list of applicants and going through them that night, he comes across one which catches his eye, about a woman who was on track to become a great ballet dancer, until she suffered an injury which forced her not to continue with it anymore. The next day, the men begin the auditioning process. We see this through a montage sequence, showing various different females doing various different things, with various different personality types, while being interviewed. But despite all of these women auditioning, the father only really cares about seeing one of them, and then it's finally time for her audition. After the audition is over, it's pretty clear that this is the woman the man wants. That night, he decides to call her up and arrange a time to meet up and talk. But for him, it's obviously more of a date than anything business related. The friend who he was conducting the interviews with calls him up and proceeds to inform him that the man this woman claimed to work for doesn't work at the place she claimed he did, and in fact, he's been missing for 18 months by this point. To the viewer, this is obviously some sort of red flag, but he clearly doesn't want to hear any of it, or at the very least, he's just brushing it off as some sort of mistake, because by this point, he's falling for her, and he's falling for her hard. He'd excuse nearly anything at this point. After meeting up with the woman, she cleverly explains away this misunderstanding, as her just simply lying to them, because she was told by a friend that if she pretended to have a contact, it would come across as more impressive. Obviously to the man, that's all he needs to know, and all he wants to know, so he doesn't press the issue any further. During their time together, they hit it off. The woman appears to be very interested in this man's company, and she makes it pretty clear that she's more interested in him than she is interested in the role. So as far as he's concerned, he's lucked out. The auditioning process has worked, and he's managed to easily get past the awkward issue of moving from a business relationship to a possible romantic relationship. Later on, we see him talking to his friend from the audition, and he's prompted to not be so hasty and jump headfirst into this, as the friend has attempted to conduct a background check on the woman and come back with absolutely nothing. Of course, once again, he doesn't want to hear any of it. At this point, he's got his eyes set on her, and is absolutely head over heels for the woman. However, he does agree not to call her back right away on the advice of his friend. That night, in his home study, we see from the father's perspective that he's contemplating picking up the phone and calling the woman, but ultimately decides not to on the advice of his friend. Then we see from the woman's perspective that she's just sitting on the floor next to the phone, staring at it, waiting for it to call. 
At this point, it's pretty clear to the viewer that there's something not quite right about this situation. First of all, there's absolutely no trace of this woman, as if she's just a ghost who leaves no trace of her existence behind. The man she's claimed to work for has mysteriously been missing for 18 months, and now we see her creepily staring at her phone, presumably for hours at a time. She's a keeper. The next day, we see her passed out next to her phone, but in the exact same position as she was before, meaning she's been there for hours waiting for it to call. While the man is at work, still struggling with the fact that he shouldn't call her. Eventually, he caves in and does it anyway, and as the woman's phone begins to ring, we see her give a disturbingly sinister smile, when all of a sudden, a large sack in front of her bounces across the room. They agree to meet up once again, this time for drinks. We see that they've been talking to each other for so long that the bar is completely empty at this point, except for these two, still chatting away. He decides that he's going to take her away on a weekend holiday trip, and he confides in his son that he plans to propose to her while there. He's only met her like twice and already planning on a proposal. Things must move fast in Japan. While at the holiday home, the woman begins to act strangely, sitting on the bed silently as the man talks to her, turning to the man, getting up and beginning to remove all of her clothes. She gets into the bed, invites him over, and begins to show him her scarred legs and explaining to him that it was caused by an accident as a child. The man leans in, presumably to engage in some good old fashioned coitus, but then immediately wakes up in the bed alone, confused and disorientated. The phone rings, and it's the reception informing him that the woman has left. After realising that she's just completely up and disappeared with no warning, confused about the whole situation, he returns to his friend in the city to discuss what happened. He decides to set off on his own in an attempt to search for her, using her CV from the audition and what little information she told him. He visits her old boarded up ballet school, where he meets a wheelchair bound man with decaying looking feet. The man in the wheelchair begins to act incredibly strangely in the way he talks about the woman. We see as the viewer through a series of flashbacks that he was indeed the person responsible for the scars on her legs by crawling over to her while she was a child and forcefully burning her with incense sticks. He learns absolutely nothing useful from this man, so decides to go to the location of a bar where she stated that she sometimes works at. After arriving at the location and attempting to get into the bar, he is informed by a local resident that the bar's been closed for over a year at this point due to the owner being a victim of a rather grisly murder, resulting in her being cut up into multiple pieces and strewn across the place. When the police arrived to investigate the scene, they discovered that there were in fact extra fingers, an ear and a tongue which didn't belong to the murder victim. Okay, maybe she's not a keeper. After an uneventful search, which found nothing more than a creepy guy in a wheelchair and bizarre hallucinations of seeing the murder victim's tongue move about the place, he decides to go home and sit back in his chair and have a glass of whiskey. After taking a sip, he begins to realise something isn't quite right before standing up and struggling to move, with him then falling backwards. He enters a bizarre nightmare situation, where his mind is serving as his own worst enemy, putting him into one uncomfortable situation after the other. All of a sudden, he's sitting having dinner with the woman, before he looks over to see his deceased wife, now alive, his son when he was a child, and his present teenage son's girlfriend. He's then at the woman's house, the place where we saw her watching the phone. She begins to perform a sex act on him, but every time he looks down at her, it's a different woman from his life. Scared and confused, he attempts to flee this bizarre scenario, but trips over the large sack in the room. He goes to investigate the peculiar bag, when all of a sudden, it jumps up and a naked, mutilated man begins to crawl out of it. His feet are missing, one of his ears are gone, he has no tongue, and multiple fingers have been removed. This is the owner of those extra body parts found at the grisly scene of the bar owner's murder. All of a sudden, the woman is there. She begins to puke into a dog bowl before entering the room and feeding it to the mutilated, dishevelled man. We see the woman with her stepfather, the man who abused her as a child and burnt her legs. She begins to wrap a metal wire around his head. She starts to pull it tighter and tighter, until eventually, the head pops right off. 
This insane sequence of events running through this drugged man's mind is only happening for about one second in real time. It's all occurring in the amount of time that it takes him to fall backwards from the standing position until landing on the floor. Now back in reality, he discovers he cannot move and is paralysed. He sees through the next door that the woman is there, and behind the woman is his dead and mutilated dog. She enters the room and begins to explain to him that he is completely paralysed and stuck in place. However, his nerves are completely alive, and will be able to feel absolutely everything. In fact, the feeling in his nerves will be more intense due to the paralysis, and then she begins to inject something into his tongue. She explains to him that he's no different from the other men, simply using the audition process to find women to sleep with and then chuck them to the side once he's done with them, before then producing a large thin needle and slowly inserting it into his stomach admiring the process of doing it, having fun, as if it's just a little game to her. After inserting multiple more into his stomach, she moves to his eyes. She inserts multiple beneath his eyeballs and begins to flick them as they're protruding from this man's skull. After she's done poking him with holes, she redirects her attention to his feet. But for this, she's got something other than needles. She produces the same metal wire from earlier, wraps it around his ankle and then begins to slice off his foot by sliding it back and forth with an almost orgasmic look on her face. She is clearly taking immense pleasure in slowly but surely torturing this man to death. Without a single ounce of hesitation, after the first foot is removed, she jumps right to the second one and begins. However, she is interrupted by the man's son returning home. She hides, and as the father is lying paralysed on the floor, he can barely let out any noise to warn his son about the immediate impending danger. Just as the son discovers his father full of needles and with a foot missing, the woman approaches him from behind, but right before she's able to attack him, the father wakes up in a bed next to the woman in the holiday home from earlier, as if everything which took place after the holiday scene was in fact just one long bizarre nightmare. Unfortunately, this temporary relief is short-lived, as once again he wakes up, but this time back in reality. And unfortunately for him, these events are in fact very real. The woman begins to chase the son up the stairs while spraying some sort of substance at him, but out of self-defence, he kicks her, sending her flying all the way down the stairs, resulting in her death. As the shocked son begins to call the police and describe the absolute horror of the situation and that he's just walked in on his dad severely mutilated, the woman begins to talk to the man once more, this time repeating things to him that she said to him previously when they were out on dates, before eventually ceasing to say anything at all. With the man lying there, with needles inserted into his eyes and his stomach, a missing foot and the other one halfway off, the movie ends. Audition is one of those movies which doesn't give away too much to the viewer. These events are absolutely insane and completely not understandable as to why they're happening, but I feel in this case, the horror is amplified by not knowing everything. The shroud of mystery surrounding the woman makes you wonder who or what she really is. Is she supernatural in some way? Or is she just some sort of deranged serial killing body part mutilating woman who doesn't really have the best reasoning behind the things she's doing? The slow build up this movie has, with it taking over an hour before any of the truly weird things begin to happen, serves as a good way for you to get to know the man. It plays out almost as an interesting drama before catching you off guard with its insane horror. We learn that he's a loving, genuine father who has a great relationship with his son and wants him to do the best he possibly can. He's a hard-working man who's channeled the grief of losing his wife into running a successful growing business. Unlike what the woman said while chopping off his feet, he wasn't using the audition process as merely a quick and easy way to sleep with women. He was genuinely looking for someone to love and to make his wife, and feeling that he was too old to deal with all of the other stuff and make mistakes in the traditional way you meet partners, he was talked into using the auditions by his friend who made it sound appealing to him. All of that combined makes the horror elements hit you like a ton of bricks when they eventually do take off in full swing. The movie has pulled you in, nice and slowly, getting you invested into this man and his story. And then BAM! Mutilated puke-eating man in a bag, a dead dog, oh and now his foot's being forcefully removed.
Before we wrap things up, I just wanted to say a big thank you to Dom for supporting the channel on Patreon. YouTube doesn't take kindly to these sort of videos, so monetization is basically a no-go for me. So I really appreciate it when people believe in my content enough where they want to actually help out and financially support. So once again, thanks Dom. Also, the channel has a Discord as well, so if you're interested in joining and having discussions about movies with like-minded people, there's now a place for that. Also, if you want to make a movie recommendation, that's probably the best place to do it. Once again, thank you Dom for supporting the channel on Patreon, and thank you to everyone else for watching.